Sheldon, can you uh, kind of go through the injuries one by one for us here? They add up quite a bit. Let's you might need to cue me on some of them. <laughs> Let's start with what, what exactly is the ailment and what's the prognosis? Yeah, he's got a shoulder injury. It's... Uh, first, just to back up, I mean, obviously he had the he had the bump in practice, and you know, the at the time, it's so quick. I mean, I think it was about an hour later after that bump that we were on a plane and heading to to, to Winnipeg, but or to Minnesota, I guess. But um, you know, they they were just assessing and giving it some time just to to settle, and uh, after. Giving it some time and, and seeing where it was at, the you know it's a little bit worse than they thought it was going to be at that time. And uh, now we've come home. He's had a chance to get his MRI and stuff like that. So he's, they they think it's going to be about three to four weeks probably for him. Um, you know, but uh, they're going to you know stay on top of it. I think he'll be back on the ice probably sooner than later. Uh, but uh, something that in terms of when he gets back to play, we're going to be cautious with it, of course, and make sure that he's. He's ready. And uh, Travis Dermott? Dermott also has a shoulder injury that um, doesn't appear to be as as bad as Mitch's, but certainly bad enough that he's not available. Rasmus? Rasmus, uh, we got good news on Rasmus. Uh, oh, I would say better than we were expecting, given that when you see him leave the arena on crutches and unable to put any weight on his on his leg and yesterday wasn't a whole lot better in that sense but uh, he said an MRI as well and the results came back very positive in the sense of no real structural damage to his knee uh, it's just going to take some time here for it to settle down the swelling and bruising and stuff like that so he can start to be weight bearing and things of that nature but they think once that that once that settles that uh, he'll recover pretty, pretty quickly so no, Mrazik's Mrazik's obviously back with us here. His conditioning extent with the Marlies is done, but we're glad he was able to get in a game. It would have been nice to get him in more than one, uh, but that was the schedule was what or is what it is, and and uh, you know he now we're just bringing him back here and continue to build him up and get him to the point where he's ready to play an NHL game. Do you have a timeline on Rasmus? Um. I can't remember for certain. It's it's not going to be long term. Uh, two three weeks, I think, is what they said. But it all depends on how on how it settles down. Uh, because, like I said, right now they're not thinking there's any structural damage to it that they've seen in the pictures. Uh, so that's good news. But uh, he's still in a lot of discomfort. He was still on crutches yesterday. All those kind of things. So it's just a matter of getting through this next little bit and then get back on the ice and building himself back up. But all things considered, really good news on that front. Where's the frustration level for you? How do you park it now, Sheldon, given that you're going to let you lose a solid player here for a bit of time that, over something that shouldn't have happened? Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's tough. But, I mean, I think we have moved on from it. That's, that's really it, you know. Um, things happen in this game. Uh, some are unfortunate, and that certainly is one of them. Uh, how do you replace Mitch? I mean, what do you do? You just adjust, uh, adjust and, and adapt. Um, that's that's it. That's what that's what we've been doing. You know, uh, obviously, it's a it's a big loss for us. He's a major contributor. You know, at five on five, power play, penalty kill, he does a, does a, a lot of that for us. Now the guys need to step up. You know, and, and uh, fill that gap. And so, like what Spez did in in Minnesota. You know, that's there's a guy stepping up and. Um, you know, whether it's our power play, penalty kill, we got to fill those, fill those gaps. So tonight, will, will it be Rubens and Steve's in? Yes. So how do you feel about those two? What they, what they might bring? Yeah, I'm excited for them. You know, it's one thing. Anytime these injuries and things happen, opportunity opens up for, for others to come in. Uh, specific to, to Rubens and Steve's, uh, two guys that we've been excited about here. Obviously, I've been familiar with Rubens, coached him with the Marlies and kind of saw him as he came in the organization working with us in rookie tournament and then on to the Growlers at the ECHL level and then making his way to the American League and and then you know my first training camp here having him involved and playing in preseason games and and I think he really earned the respect of the group here not just me but with Dean Chanelth and the rest of our coaching staff and he's done a good job there with the Marlies. Um, you know we have some other options there as well but it's a good it's a good uh, opportunity for him that we think we you know 
we're excited to give to him and, and show what he can do with it. And then Steve's a guy that we were really excited about based on looking at him through the summer and how he was training and skating and then got off to a really good start through development camp and early in rookie tournaments. I was out there in Traverse City and he got injured there and missed our camp as a result. Um, so a lot of our players and staff not, not all that familiar with him. But uh, you know, I, I like him from what I've seen. A lot of other people in the organization like him. Marley's coaches can't, can't say enough positive things about him and the job he's done since coming back from injuries. So good opportunity uh, for him, him here as well. So two guys making their NHL debut and you know, that's, that's exciting. And, um, you know, big, big for them and also specific to Rubens guy that's kind of come through the process here you know the way we've established things uh, uh, a number of years ago now I guess with the growlers and to, you know bringing in a guy on an AHL contract and and looking to to develop him to get to this point now where you got a guy that can help you at the NHL level we think is a very positive development and uh, you know that's that's a, that's a really good good thing for that program and and uh, he's certainly a positive example of how he's worked his way through that. Yeah, the ECHL isn't what it once was, right? It's truly like a double A. It's no longer just a blue. So its reputation has always been sort of really Yeah, I mean, I I'm not overly familiar, you know, with with a, with the, the league in general, but I, I think I think the sport is different than what you're describing now. And you know, I think the HL has had the same reputation a number of years ago, and the NHL at one time as well. So. I think the game itself is uh, is evolving, and everybody's trying to catch up. Are you tempted at all to try and catch up with Boston? Or do you like to get yeah, I'm tempted for sure, but I do like the stability there, especially with Cash coming off of his injury in, uh, in particular. Just just having uh, something that's consistent and, and reliable for him that he trusts and he likes and he feels comfortable in. Um, you know, we, we tried uh, Cash with Austin, you know, in our game in Buffalo, and. Talking with with uh, Andre after he just didn't he didn't feel like himself in that game. He was a little out of his comfort zone, and uh, I learned pretty quickly that he's a guy that likes likes that likes comfort and consistency and reliability. So especially coming off of his injury, I think that that's really important. And and then also that's that's an effective line for us and an effective duo. So if you take away from that, then you you you've got another hole somewhere else. So um, I, I like this. It gives me the availability to to move people around still, which I, I suspect we will. I mean, Austin's going to have a lot of different line mates tonight. How do you feel about the fact that Jason's getting an in-person hearing and his suspension could be longer than the two games Pion's got to play Rasmussen? I mean, given the fact that that's still ongoing and he hasn't had the hearing, I think I'll reserve comments on that. Um, but I think obviously not just the people in this room, but everybody that's involved in the game knows Jason Spezza and his character very well. So. Uh, I would expect or hope that that's taken into account here. What did you think of the two game for Pion, that rule? I, th I thought the play at the time was worthy of a penalty, and clearly the league agreed. You mentioned that, you know, the Matthews uh, Dubois situation could have been a penalty uh, just on Dubois or an expert on Dubois. Do you feel like, in general, the league needs to do more to protect guys like Austin? It's not specific to Austin necessarily and the best players in the world, but I think that is a factor. Those guys get a lot more attention on them, so therefore there would be more opportunity for such calls. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't think Austin's drawn a penalty the entire season, which is strange considering how much he has the puck and how involved he is. Um, so you know, those, those kind of things I think that are, are worth looking at if you're, you know, if, if you're involved uh, with that, but I think in general, just in, when I look at that situation, I thought I thought it was worthy of, of an extra on the other side. Austin probably gets two, and they get four, and away we go, kind of thing. But um, referees see it different in that case, and they they you know they, they make the call as they see fit, and we have to we have to press on and, and deal with it, which is what we were doing. And then it, it gets it gets uh, compounded to the rat, the Rasmus situation, but. We've pressed on from that here. We've got a Columbus team in tonight that we have to be prepared for. We're coming back from the road once again, late night the other night, coming back and, you know, day off, try to regroup and ready to go tonight. What kind of threat does Columbus pose? Lots of team speed. They're going to check hard uh, and defend hard. Their special teams are very good. Penalty kill in, protect, in particular uh, makes things pretty miserable uh, on the opposition. You know, looking at it, they, they do a, uh, an incredible job of that. 
Uh, so they're going to work and compete, and they've got guys like Bell Score for giving them the opportunity to do so. So, yeah, uh, I think they've they're just gone up. Things have gone kind of up and down for them, but they've been a very competitive team that have beaten some very good teams, and um, you know, we're expecting them to be very organized and disciplined and play well as a team. And uh, you know, it's going to be a challenge for us to you know, to clean up our penalty kill and do do a job there, get back to the way we've been playing, and then um, try to get the edge on special teams and uh, maintain that edge that we think we should have. And then at 5-on-5, five five, got to do a job there. How do you think Kasha fits in with that power play unit? Fits uh, really well. You know, we, we, we used him on the second unit the other night, and we liked some of the things that he offered there. Um, you know, we, we hadn't been using him a lot on the power play, mainly just the way things shook out and managing minutes. We had him on the penalty kill. Now we just think it's we need to get more from him in that sense. So. You know, I get the question about you know, using Kasha with with Austin and kind of playing him in Mitch's spot there. And at five on five, I don't necessarily think that that's the right time for us to do that. But he's in essence, he's getting Mitch's penalty kill minutes. He's getting now Mitch's power play minutes. Um, so you know, we're using him in different ways like that. Um, and I think you know, he's he's got lots to offer there. And then he maintains the right shot, and you know that that you know, uh, brings some level a level of. Um, familiarity for that unit, just in, just in the way the handedness of the players works out.